Okay. Um, this conference has been recorded. The guidance is the same. Should <laughs> make sure your way is being recorded. Um, so uh, we have all the discussion earlier. <coughs> And, uh, again, uh, so, so I, I guess I, I ask that question is, you know, do we um, do we ever use that YAM tool as the Voltage project point of view? And if we're going to use that, where it's going to be fit? Um, I think Tom looks, you know, confused. <laughs> you know, uh -huh. Maybe I uh, doesn't ask a very clear question. Or is, can we utilize the the YAM tool to? Um, the, the originally, I, when I, when I, when, you know, the, the originally when I asked Tom to participate is, I, I, I do see multiple node bound interface on the Volta, mm -hmm. and we have O nodes for the open flow, and then we have Yen mm -hmm. coming down from the Yen, the the, the NetComp server mm -hmm. on the Volta, Volta interface we 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 were planning to implement here, and. Uh, so I see a parallel path, and I also see um, there will be potential conflicts. Okay, so like uh, David was saying, if we use the same interface for provisioning or modification of the of the of the device management, mm -hmm. then the how do we synchronize them? Or you know, I mean, we need to do an analysis on that. We don't know if there is anything that's actually doing that. Right. No, no, I just want to. I just want to say that's why I and, and I saw maybe that um, the Yen tool. I don't know whether the Yen tool can be a. I do, this, maybe because I didn't understand who it was. I thought maybe that's something. Uh, maybe owners can become a single point of the contact and determine which flow to go down to. To 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 me that will be. Uh, that is the place we can avoid uh, out of sync of the database for configuration. Uh, and uh, so, so that, that I think that was my original idea. And I, well, I, 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 wanted, I wanted to explore whether that is the route to take. Well, let's just don't necessarily talk internally. You know, so, so it could be made to solve that, but I don't know that it would right now. Right, but whether we, whether we need to sure, make that that way. Right. So, so it's, it's almost the point. It's, yes, Volta. Well, Volta northbound is actually in open flow, or its interface is gRPC. If a deployment needs a netcom northbound on top of Volta, <coughs> um, it is absolutely possible for any deployment to take the tool with Ono, create a Yang model that meets their northbound requirement. And generate a northbound netcom server uh, abstraction for their environment, their deployment, and then modify, you know, fill them in the subs that are generated by the Yang model to make the call into Onos or not Onos into whatever uh, to to see how they see fit. Right? That's absolutely possible. So what I'm thinking now is like because that means. Volta has a standard northbound netcomp interface, or no? We say, look, if you want one, there are tools out there to build that. And Volta has an API, gRPC. Go do it. But it doesn't necessarily have to be a. You don't have to. Do I don't think we have to say, hey, here's Volta's netcomp interface, because that may be very different. Some deployment X or carrier X may have a very Different subset of models they want to expose than carrier Y. So I'm not sure we as Volta need to just <coughs> how we just pick that. We can just say, look, here's our northbound interface. You went NetCom, go grab models, compile, you know, drive the Yang out of the GUI, you're done. Well, maybe add some other code, but why do, why are we involved in that discussion? Why isn't that external to us? And then let almost deal with the multiple databases, the config, operational stuff, as opposed to dealing well, with it all. There's two things in that con. As well. like you could use that con the protocol, just right. without the database. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So the question to ask you is: Is there a requirement for both of them to provide netcon at the NDI? 
That's the question to ask. If you don't, then I guess. I agree. It's a question. I guess my answer is no. Because there are other tools out there that already I'm looking for more answers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand you may not like my answer, but my answer would be no. Because why should we try to north sound net comp interface when there's other tools that already do it? I would ask the operators. I mean, how do they want to yeah. use it? And the point is, you know, if that's if they have a common about packaging, but yeah, that's we're what talking about packaging and implementation. I'm talking about a just deployment a view. How does how does the OSI look at it? How does the SDN controller work? And, and again, you just ask yeah. a simple question. What is your name here? I would argue it's GRPC. Too low level. So there's more to netconf gang than config, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So because he wants to stay with this. Again, there would be there are tools to do that. I, I, I guess I mean, is it worth it to hope that they get into that business versus say, yeah, we are a how that you can connect into a netcom so, so capability, but it, it, there's going to be enough variation around that that. It doesn't necessarily make sense to do it as part of Volta. Well, I think we need a little guidance. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's sort of like basically saying you need net company to write a Volta device after. Yeah. But if someone in the community supported that, then you have one that's well tested. And mm -hmm. if it's just, you know, you know so it's sort of pretty well like tested and the same for. Uh, both the changes, you know, for reconditioning or whatever statistics, you know, and you have to report to Revit if you want to use it. So it depends on who's own that one interface or do multiple end providers come up with their own collaboration. Mm -hmm. It's almost a, you know, a trip section of both as opposed to a port section. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and back to David, right? So when you say if you want to use NetConf Yen and then you can then then you get in, engage the Yen tool to generate what you know uh, the, the model or something like that. I, I want to read the piece. So, so if I wanted to have a NetConf server, uh -huh. I would take something like Ono and develop my Yang model that I wanted, or take one off the shelf, one thing, um, generate the stubs. If it required, well, it would require custom code to reach into the gRPC interface of Volta. Pull out the attributes from Volta that map into that model. And so you have to fill in that stuff. And then so, you so have so a net comp interface that would be able to access Volta. So, so the attribute in the Volta, so potentially, if that attribute is missing in the Volta, then we will add those attributes into the Volta. Not necessarily. Again, I, I, I'm going to go back to the you know, our primary abstraction interface. Those, those, those things that cannot be set through our primary abstraction interface um, need to be settable another way. And so we would have that as our north, in our northbound interface. Um, those things which are one? Set, which northbound interface? GRPC is our northbound interface at that level, I would say. Um, it is our system interface. For those attributes that are settable via our primary abstraction, um, but we want access to them for troubleshooting diagnostic purposes, we also suppose those as read only. And you could argue read only is access control versus. Um, so we would expose those as well. How you get those to the interface of your choosing is kind of outside. So even there, um, I guess we need to really look at it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, operational data, like like bulk data, stuff like that, or TM. Maybe GRPC or even NetCon. It's not that I think of it, right? Because they need to be screened up. And then even a Kafka. Yeah. So it's, there's already a Kafka. Yeah. And BI as well. Volta is providing because we see a use case. Yeah, that. and we would. So that's exactly what I'm saying. But find out the use cases and they let's not just say that GRPC is the interface because it's going to be use case driven. By definition, it is. I didn't draw Kafka over there. I had an update. <laughs> right, but, but by definition, that's. <laughs> you have an update. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By definition, it 
definition, gRPC is the interface. gRPC is the internal interface between, because Wolfram is an ensemble of controllers, so it's an ensemble of microservices, and right. gRPC is used between some microservices. But, some but every, everything maps down to gRPC effectively. Mm -hmm. Not everything. It's a system interface. I wouldn't say system interface. There are certain things that don't go on gRPC. They just go to Kafka level and that's it. Okay. So that's there's that's and Kafka. I agree. Right. I agree. Yes. There's gRPC and Kafka. Those are that that represents the the surface of, of how you get into Wolf and how you get the information out. So performance KPIs and all that. That is the system interface. Everything else is just a translation into that and out of that. <coughs> Which is sound different than the way it was sold by Ali a long time ago, right? But the original definitions around Volta, uh, I believe, included describing automatically generating protocol stacks from the protobus to the tune of the blue blocks up there, right? And potentially uh, others. Well, where, you, where you can, uh, I'm not against auto generation, so, where it makes sense. Well, the protobus are used to auto, auto generate. The REST protocol mm -hmm. information, right? The protobufs were also used to generate netcon. Now, it's not the netcons that are, are what we've been discussing here, right? It's basically mapped one to one right. to the commands, and you don't have copy config or anything, but the netcon server support mm -hmm. everything that's that described. There's a the distinction, too. We are getting confused between protocol versus how the data is represented as right. yeah. The data is represented as a because Metcon, the model is much more than just how the representation of the data is. So that's what you're trying to say. Like once in front of us, we don't have that. So once the data is presented, you just show it. Fine. It's okay. You have the data. Who cares, right? If somebody is able to translate it, no problem. But I guess we shouldn't confuse it with Metcon, which is a protocol. The question is, do we need it or not? Rendering the data in one way or the other to higher layer controllers is available. If you want to do tooling, that's fine. If you want to do auto generation, that's okay. And certain interfaces are best suited for certain things and something best suited for something else. So that's what I'm saying. What is the requirement for the MBI of VLC hardware abstraction? What are the interfaces? It's a simple requirement that I'm asking right now. Right now we have, if I just look at that picture, Volta is an ensemble of all those containers. It's not just the code, right? So we have open flow, we have CLI, we have REST, we have the, the bottom of RCCs, like you're saying, that con mm -hmm. yeah. We have those four chains, and we have Kafka that's missing in the white block over there <laughs> as well. And what else do we need? Do we need to take some of those and say that we don't, this is only for debugging purposes, only for somebody that's troubleshooting, a developer, or. So, so, so I can tell you that the position initially was that we were just going to support REST and open flow. Those well, are the two I can also argue that you don't have to support open flow because if you look at that gRPC, it's a trace mapping between flow, open flow protocol to the gRPC yeah. messages. Yeah. You could have gone directly to gRPC from yeah. Ono's so Why did you have you to? Could have, right? but you have to have have a, it's not a device. Ono's didn't have a gRPC capability. At right? that time. At that time, right. exactly. So, uh, so the two initially, that, the, the, and, and the CLI was there for debugging purposes, mm -hmm. right? The CLI but is agree. very it's useful for debugging, yeah, but the two primary good. protocols, and I know, I know that both want, like hell, to not have to support Netcon at all, right? Uh, because he just loved Netcon. So really, so really, the, the two were REST and and and, uh, and open flow. Those are that. That was the initial, and and Netcon was added after the fact because of, of pressure that yeah, no, we need Netcon. So it was added, but only as a mapping mm -hmm. of the gRPCs up into right. the equivalent, you know. The, uh, XML uh, structures, mm -hmm. right, and and, and the the, the, uh, the remote procedure calls, and that was it. So, you know, theoretically, m my position would be let's support as few northbound interfaces as possible, because the more you support, the harder it is to the harder it is to maintain. Right, but I guess one that needs to be coded. Yeah, as opposed and to automatic generated. Yeah. That, that right. sounds like a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I don't think it was just so. I mean, I, I think I've lost at least part of an earlobe listening to Ali talk about that conference. Yes, yeah. well, <laughs> so 
need to look at. Nobody arguing that you're not going to do this in Yeah, again, the only issue is when we whittle those models down and make sure that those models don't contain things that are covered under the other primary extraction. Can I ask a question on that? Just, just for my own uh, information. So, when we talk about the uh, the information model representation within uh, within Volta, is it, is that always done through a protobuf encoding? Just curious. I, I I don't know how it's represented. The information model that you're going to want to expose. Yeah. Right now, we just yeah, protobuf. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I just, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all sort of ups, but then we look at generating the sort of ups from something that was already existing. In the case of WPA5, we generate it from that small. Yeah, I just didn't know what kind of build that is. Well, I'd like to use that part, right? So I think there was the kind of config and then you can sort of control. The question was, was the model needed? To be able to do control using the game. Um, control, I mean, define control. Yeah. Right, so, so I think there were a few design controls we can actually done. So maybe we can kind of revisit those. So the intent is that, yes, Volta uh, would work with any SDN controller with the assumption that the interface that is going to mold the for control itself as well. Right? There's an element of it that will be config. They could come through the SDN controller or some other contract with the assumption that you're using NetComp. And NetComp provides the, um, the protocol and the name provides right, your uh, model. Right. Yeah, but I think so OTA is going to provide a set of other interfaces. Okay, I think at this point it could be TRCC, Kafka, anything, right? So I, the southbound of whatever you're using is going to attract. It'll provide drivers or something that allows you to access that specifically. So I guess what I'm trying to understand is what are the specific issues and what are we trying to decide on? Because it feels like we're re we keep rehashing a few things. So if we can clarify what decisions we've made mm -hmm. and what open questions we still need to answer. Because I think we had questions around anything. So for example, we're saying control is being provided by the open flow interface. And some of the use cases we need to understand is the bootstrap requirement. So what is the minimum set of configurations that you need to bootstrap this device? And then that will help drive the models that are needed to do that minimally. But there are other use cases that are diagnostic, right? And so if we can start keeping those apart and figure out specific models needed for those, I would say the control aspect of the model is the least of the concern at this point from a prioritization standpoint. Well, I think the question is, if I understand you right, um, open flow has what you're talking about, control, setting up the flow end to end, right? There are some primitives in open flow, like PBQ mapping and stuff like that. You can, but with the flow, you can also classify in a particular PBIT and map it to an input queue or something like that. There is, one of the ideas was to take that and sort of get the, DBA logic also, I mean, provision the DBA to um, do something at the pond level for upstream. There was something like that as well. And I think you're also, you're advocating something like that. Why don't we use that and kind of infer and it's okay. Maybe it won't do everything, but it will do something like that. Well, yeah, the only I think that's where the haziness comes in. It's not like a clear separation of concern. And, is that right? Is that yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is the, the infer is essentially a policy infer inference, right? For there's a way to describe flow deployment. Okay. Here's how I map the flow control to the technology specifics for this deployment. Uh, versus, you know, this technology, this deployment, here's how this open flow control message maps down to specific technology configuration. So there's some inference there, I think it's based configurable and policy based. Um, that has to happen. And so not everything that is going to be set down at the hardware is going to come through this um, other interface. You might want to be able to read it through this other interface, but it's going to be policy based and inferred from the open flow abstraction. But are we trying to identify all the interfaces and what category of data would be provided for them? Or do we want to focus on both the 2.0 in terms of the specific set of things we're trying to do? Right? So we're 
talking about, like, about bootstrapping, are we trying to do some sort of zero touch provisioning? So is that a feature that we're trying to do as part of zero? So I feel like the problem space is kind of unbounded. Unless we're saying we're going to do We don't have the garment or what the use case is on. But you don't know. And you're right. If you have the use cases, then you can. We can't solve everything at the same time, right? Exactly. So, so what are the specific things we're trying to do here? I mean, minimally, I've heard this job. So maybe it's one of the things we can focus on. Right? But it feels like, since the problem is a bit unbounded, it feels like we're trying to redesign the job. I guess the, the, the list of the very high level OTA 2.0 um, features, right? was continuing to what we have, you know, how do we, if we had, um, how, how do I say that, just, you know, the feature for continuing what the puck is extending, right? And uh, I guess uh, zero touch, you know, let, let's just make it specific. Zero touch um, has not made it to the 2.0 you know the feature list yet, right? So, so, and we do have a lot of things we need to we need to um, complete in order for um, you know. So I guess the question is file or more, you know, make 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 the existing framework more field trial deployable. Right? And I think that the the question is. What is the path you want to take to make it deployable, right? I've heard some feedback that there's a lot of configuration in order to get uh, a VLL key set up right. going. So is the plan moving forward to have to manually configure all of these things, or is there a way to bootstrap it? So is 2.0 is continuing the path of trying to manually configure all of these things? Or are we saying is there a minimal set that you so, but again, um, just to qualify your question a little bit more, deployable, not just Volta, right? Volta is going to go with some other controller too, right? So mm -hmm. there may be a minimal set of things that come up from top. Exactly. That, yeah. And, and so you need to look at the whole solution. You have a controller, what's under north of it? Are you building a application that says, I discover this and I'm going to position it? So I think you need to look at the whole solution mm -hmm. as part of the Are you working coming it out to whatever the controller is? And part of that is going to be you have a model, right, or whatever you're trying to build in terms of your netcom and build out the full stack in terms of the to if, if provisioning is focused on the I think we said that yesterday. Does that mean that one of the things that would be helpful is if Right now we're focused on both the, right. the, the filling the screen, right? And in some ways we need to zoom out so that we know the whole, the whole the holistic system, that we know that Volta has a relationship to Ono, so we may have a relationship to other systems. There's a orchestration, you know, um, open stack relationship as well. And if we zoom out and know these things, we may be less inclined to keep putting things into Volta this bullet needs this, mm -hmm. and when we're zoomed in on just this thing, mm -hmm. it, that's where it lands, as opposed to realizing uh, that's something that OpenStack will handle. That's something Onos can deal with, right? I but think I that's the, the, the context that and we probably need. And the question comes down to 2.0 is, mm -hmm. is it building just the Volta piece? So is the community only focusing on the Volta piece, or is 2.0 saying this is the vertical we need, and these are all the pieces that need to be modified in each of those systems in order to make it if you want to go to the point of 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 back to um, before Volta, when there was Accord and Onos and Volt, um, it was clear that there was a more holistic activity on how to recreate access in a, in a Accord environment. And we were so um, <coughs> frustrated with the, with the drive, creating open flow drivers for access equipment, we started Volta as a, sort of a template or a repeatable exercise that would allow you to quickly and efficiently 
and create open flow stacks that manage to access technologies. So, in that regard, Volta was a constrained problem. It wasn't intended to be the holistic thing. We had labeled that our card at the time. And, um, and I think people are still in that mode. And this is not trying to solve the entire system problem. This is actually trying to solve something much smaller in scope. And there's a worry, I, I guess, like most people, if we start going off in lots of different directions, you'll dilute the energy and, and that point project won't, won't have a very successful outcome. Okay. I think the, the underlying issue comes back to there, there is that abstraction there that needs to be filled, but the, we're running into um, issues where we want to make sure that this is usable from a deployment perspective, which means the deployment question has to be addressed. Right. Okay? And so we're only focus on what can be configured here and not on what is the flow to actually get this deployed. So what's the end-to-end -end flow? And then you'll know whether there's really a clear separation of concern or whether there is this thing that we're talking about. Well, I guess the, the question is, do we agree that is something that should be tackled? And if it is, then does it make sense to right, make sure it's draw out what the flow looks like to make that Yes. Right? So I think, I think the answer is yes. And that um, the, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm going to give ourselves work. <laughs> is that um, I'm aware of a number of different service providers who have interest in moving forward with this technology. They don't all have exactly the same deployment in mind. Mm -hmm. um, amongst us, we've talked about trying to homogenize our deployment plans to make it easier for a community to, to cater to that. And let's say it's somewhat successful, <laughs> but not totally. So even then, there'll be a number of use cases. And I think you could legitimately ask the interested service providers to cough those up. How do you see it working from a holistic, you, know, you want to deploy it, great. How, what are you going to do just exactly? And we're not going to tell you. A lot of times that's been sort of the interface model so far. We've got our court, you download it, knock yourself out. Right? So that's probably not what the Volta team needs to hear. They need to understand, all right, you're going to download our court, and you're going to jettison this and throw in that and munch it this way. We need to know what those scenarios look like because ultimately they'll set the, the environment for both of the work in, right? <clears throat> That's, that would be a clear path. I think there's, there's a bit of a chicken and egg problem there because I think some of the carriers say, well, tell me what you can do and I'll tell you how I'm going to deploy it, right? They tell us how you want to deploy it. We'll tell you what we can build. So it may be an iterative <laughs> actual process. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Boil it down to one deployment, right? Mm -hmm. You almost, if, I think understanding even all the deployment models help you understand, okay, this is where you need the flexibility in terms of the knob so that you could enable these different deployment models. And so I don't know if the service provider is willing to share that, but I think having that available, you can still understand the deployment. I mean, boiling it down to one deployment is fine, but you're going to start losing those knobs. Because the people that are building it are not going to understand where the flexible point is. Right. So, so I think the interesting, well, from my point, one of the interesting questions there is, as I stated earlier, there's a primary abstraction, which is the open flow abstraction. Mm -hmm. Do the carriers, all the use cases of the carriers, one of the use cases of the carriers, fit that primary abstraction? If the answer is yes, I'm okay. If the answer is no, if that's what we're seeing, the okay. innovation. At what level? We're, we're seeing deviation at that level, then I think we have a, a, pro, a problem. But I don't, I'm not aware of deviation at that layer. Right? I'm not aware of any carrier interested in both of them, not interested in using my <coughs> controller to, to manipulate it. If that's what you were asking, yeah. you know, then it's pattern follows that. The same as same controller or no? A S Correct. Uh, it would be easy to open flow. The yeah. open flow extraction would be useless with <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. controller. Some type of controller or, or open flow based ah. SDM controller. Because yeah, yeah. So this point, why open flow? Okay. At right. this point, all the ones that I'm aware of right. are interested in open flow SDM right. okay. controller. Okay. 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 Okay.
match action based control. Yes. yes. I think the next thing to clarify is is your config always going to go to the controller or is your controller providing the control path and your config can either go to the controller or to the management? Yeah, that's that sort of forced upon us. I think the first choice or would be to have a flexible open flow uh, automated system. But um, as we observed, not everything in the pod is available or easily extracted through the open flow interface. So there is also, just as in with most Ethernet switches, you might be able to control their forwarding behaviors with open flow, but there are aspects of the device that are not revealed right. through open flow that are still part of the production so environment. I think we agree there is control and there is config. Yes. Um, so is the control will go to the SDN controller. The config can go to the SDN controller or through a separate management. Yeah, that's true. And and I think there's a sort of a follow-on. This may actually vary from one service provider to the other. It's not something I've had a lot of discussions about. And that is whether the config um, is something you want to summarize for the end for our card, for the end-to-end -end system, and then and then bring out through a single northbound interface, or if config is like a banyan tree and you've got config for for Volta and config for the Onos apps and config for mm -hmm. other aspects inside the inside the pod. Okay. And I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, it's nice. uh, I mean that would answer the question with the simple yes. Yeah. That in some deployments the well, config will go through the controller and in some deployments other people will use a third party management system for that config. And then in that situation are we agreed that it's going to be that constant name base? No. If someone says yes, then we already know that there's a discrete. It could be. <laughs> 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 that would be a good question. Yeah. 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 I think most of the operators believe that the extraneous non open flow managed objects would be done through that content. This week. Which would be fine. That's all I can do. But if you have to explain. Probably and then you're in it. What are the requirements, right? right. But it's not where's that boundary of those. We need to start setting or making sure the pictures here. Okay. Uh, where the pieces are, what the requirements for breach. I guess my argument is that um, the Volta is surfacing those extraneous attributes via protobuf, gRPC, and Kafka today. Right. It's surfacing them that way. That's the technology. Right. Then on top of that, I do believe carriers will want to use NetConf to access them. Mm -hmm. But I also believe at some other point there will be another technology. And even today there might be a given carrier that wants a different technology. Mm -hmm. And so if people if you know so so I think it's important that Volta says this is how we're surfacing them and be able to find a way to map to these other technologies, these other protocols. Yes, but I, I, which is fine, but I think I was just trying to walk down the stack, right? So if you were to take it from a layered approach and these are your stacks, then you've got your controller, you've got your management, mm -hmm. and essentially boil it down to the controller. Your control is open flow, your config is net comp. Now you go down to the next level, which is your full path. And then at that point, yeah, figure out what interfaces are needed for each of the control config data. And then what you're doing is though, your controller and your management, your third party management system needs to provide that mapping down to the full path. Right. Agreed. And that's what I'm saying when we talk about those other block diagrams, we can take all those and say it's that net comp block. Yeah. And providing that bridge through as a technology choice yeah. in the grandiose solution or maybe larger solution mm -hmm. ecosystem, almost could take that role or something else could. Yeah. Um, again, so it's so packaging. Now, but again, then, then it becomes uh, what, what is Volta? Black box view. But, but I, think, I think what we're saying with black box view is your um, your open flow. 
And I think the next level is Volta. And Volta comes down to yeah, there's GRPC, there's Kafka, and I think at this point we're going to need to say they're either building the design principle of these, these are the type of data you're exposing to the northbound, or you leave that question unanswered and figure out the specific data you're going to propose, and then figure out which ones you're going to propose it through. The problem is at this point, right, you, you can either generically discuss this or you get some specific data and then you decide which one to go through. I think we took an action, I guess, Sean to put. <laughs> and I would say that we look at the models to see which ones are relevant because that's very, very important. And we have to prioritize, we can't do all of it. We have to look at which ones we want to go into that one outside of their own model. We, what we call control and open flow, like we have to then do But I think we're also saying we're not trying to figure out all the models. They kind of look back to the use cases thing, right? Requirements, what are needed yes, for requirements. Exactly. So I think our next thing as we're saying, we're not going to generically say what data is through what interface because I think we'll wrap up. So what we're going to say now is what are the use cases from a deployment standpoint and based upon that, what are the specific configurations that are needed and which interface is exposed to and then as part of both of us also take into account whatever your management system is, whether that's your controller or your, your management system your can take and figure out how to come in that southbound so you can actually fill out the whole deployment. I, I wasn't here yesterday, so did I'm rehashing things? Um, let me know. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to the party. Um, so can I just add a kind of small observation then? So open flow and are part of the black box picture. That means that the vault then has to have something that provides the NetCon server, something on its own or something that is provided by the embedded Within. No? No, no. We're saying it's going to be either through a controller or through a management system. Volta will not can expose a NetCon server, but it should not at this point because that's not the layer that we're expecting. Come on, come on, Mr. Okay. Come back. I read it more like what Tom just mentioned. Black box picture of Volta. Black box picture of the deployable. The deployable. Yeah, not Volta. Yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Deployable. The deployable but includes the uh, includes the net that's what I yes. Sorry, and so the net config has to be provided by something. Yes, and uh, here the assumption is that that something is going to be either open daylight or on us or something along the source. Or you just third entity. <laughs> yes. And I agree with that. But I think the main thing we're saying is both itself is not necessarily going in that at least at this point. Okay, so I have a question about that. Is that part of that a little bit semantic? I know it's very technical, but when we say building in that kind of server, you can technically build it into the core, or do you take the approach that, well, the value of the build day where it's, it's, it's a container outside of the core? Mm -hmm. Is that part of the discussion that we wouldn't want to natively build it in versus have it external, or are we saying don't even have it just go to your PC straight north? Of Oh, no. okay. Shockingly, I have an opinion. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we want to build it with the core. Yeah, that's fine. I don't, <laughs> know, so I don't know, but I'm like, that's a problem. But we already have an approach where it's uh, just a So this is the vanilla of pro, uh, the proposal of AT&T. Do you mind putting it in the Well, first of all, uh, do, you mind, do you think I can share this on the AT&T Connect? Um, yeah, if you can. Okay. Because it's being recorded. Nobody and so you left that part out. <laughs> 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 and stay out of jail. There's a caveat you want to add to it. Well, I'm asking the CMTS for it. That'll get you in trouble quick. <laughs> and now you're on the record saying yeah, so you know. Yeah, of course. He's, he's off the book. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just a small PMDS, but I did get a one thousand dollar. He did. So this is a, I believe this is also public record. Um, yeah, it's the picture has changed a lot. Right. And is um, it the latest view? No, no, no. This is not the latest. This is when I, I, this does have 
some other building blocks, right? Um, and then the, 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 the but I, I think in the ONAP proposal probably doesn't go into that detail, right? ONAP proposal, I mean, at least on the diagram point of view. So the votes are facing the logo, the, the SDN controller, and then from the SDN controller, you have an interface to go to the awesome logo, mm -hmm. right? So, so, so um, what I'm trying to say is, you know, um, is this diagram, you know, I think this is diagram, um, at least in my head, we sort of based on in, some, in many ways. Is this other uh, uh, you know obsolete right now, in, or needs to be updated? I don't think so. I think that the um, only the real question here is one of packaging. And what what do we call the bulk of the project? Yeah. So if you look at the light blue box, right, labeled Volta, that's a more constrained view. And this is actually what Volta is going to deliver, and these interface whether they're Know, they're just automatically generated, they're trivial. But if they're not, and there's, I believe, some concern around the Netcom server that it won't be, right, that you're going to munge it so that it matches the uh, data models that have been developed elsewhere, that then these interfaces ought to be separate blocks and not um, not delivered by both of them. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But am I bring it does actually show the I think the Kafka bus. <laughs> <laughs> but is this picture actually getting people more confused? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't see it's too terribly no, different than the last one. The database is cyber or in giant explorer. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a little different because it's a little closer data store. Consoles, how consoles on data to be and make some differences. Yeah. I like the fact that the Kafka bus is orange like a school bus. <laughs> <laughs> is it orange like orange? Yellow. 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 The NetCon server basically will be packaged. I mean, we, we already when we deploy on them, deploy on them, when we deploy both, as you said, deploy on them. There's application, you know. So if we wanted to add a, <laughs> why did we look at we call it with water? <laughs> if you wanted to add a, a gang model to that thing with the pre-built yeah. application, yeah. that's kind of where I see it. With the, you know, it's parallel with the IGMT, um, the MCAST, and all the other components, apps, which aren't part of quote unquote Volta, mm -hmm. but required for a positive deployment yeah. Yeah. for our backing functionality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that's, if you have to, you have to decide whether you want to do that as part of the whole Volta project management or not. Another thing is, for 2.0, with respect to requirements, you need to look at what is really needed for deployment that's missing in other open source space, for example. Mm -hmm. Because you can also add geotags and all that. Mm -hmm. so we also have to figure out what data models we're going to use. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be able to support all of that right away. So prioritize those data models. Yeah. And I, I would note that if so in, in this kind of big picture, um, what one piece that's missing currently is the Metcon service. Effectively on, 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 on we have Netcom client on southbound, <laughs> but we don't have Netcom server on northbound. Um, and uh, but I suspect that that will not be that difficult to to provide. Uh, but you did work for that on the diagram. We had well, we have a Netcom, Netcom, the number of. I'm just the, the diagram. Okay. 
symbolic, right? So okay. currently the, the, the principal um, adapter for northbound is Redcon, Redcon because Redcon actually does okay. have many advantages over Netcon in the sense that it allows you to sort of mount the, the namespace with Netcon, you really can't do that. Um, but but in for that's not going to be a limitation for both of because you're going to have a set of models and you know, sort of Right, and also the reason you support RESTCONS and not NETCONS is like you're a higher layer abstraction and you're yes, yes, right. abstraction. So, but but this is a lower layer abstraction. Exactly, and you can basically just present a device with the configuration. Um, yeah, so that, that, that is one piece that's missing, but I think that that is fairly um, straightforward want to add, and I would suggest that it can or doesn't have to wait for the full implementation of dynamic on Clearly, the dynamic config store would provide nice features in the sense that it can be used as a backing store for the configurations, but it's not strictly necessary because we actually do have applications in ONOS code base today, like for example, the, um, the ACT application, which has its own essentially distributed backing. That's the hierarchical uh, topology. But am I correct, the dynamic config tool, right? Mm -hmm. It's just one time thing. It's not like uh, if, you know every transaction has to go through that, right? It, 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 I mean, that maybe how it ends up being used, but I don't think it's terribly important. At least from uh, from honest point of view, in the sense that are we going to have to provide the functionality, and how often you interact with that functionality is somewhat uh, it's independent. And yeah, you know, where we spoke, you know, where we spoke about it yesterday was getting to bootstrap. Maybe it's changes, right? Then the open flow abstraction okay, so for the operation. Fine. And that's perfectly fine. But, but yeah, so from Ono's standpoint, that would not be too difficult to add the, the net con bit, bit of it. Everything else in terms of the end tooling is there, and whether or not the dynamic config substance itself is ready for this or can be used as a backing, that's some of secondary. We certainly hope it will be there. But even if it isn't, that's something that you have to wait for. That something can be changed later. So I think we're saying to in terms of time frame in is uh, eighteen oh seven to end of July. Um, yeah, that should be it. Should be there by then. The dynamic context of yeah. But I don't know whether both are ready for that. <laughs> so, uh, so I just wanted to, that's, that's perfectly fine. I just wanted to, if, if you need it, you know, let's say in February. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Figure out the dependencies on the right. timing, and then we can plug it in as pleasure. Okay. This was just an observation. But, but the, is the voter community need to make some official request to your brigade, or is it just going to just now schedule it in? Well, as a matter of fact, I think it would be nice to. We're looking for use cases, right? Uh, the dynamic config brigade is looking for specific use cases. We have a couple uh, for. But but this would be another one, and, and potentially one with uh, fairly imminent deployment. And so it would be nice to have participation from the Volta community on the brigade, at least in terms of counsel and guidance. So I would I would say we, we formalize that requirement, okay, just to make sure that it's tracked appropriately. Um, as I said, um, I have a question on the slide you have. Lower layer interfaces to netcon to legacy DCU, right? Yeah. So, in that case, open flow will not. I mean, how are the packets strapped to work on Not just the management path then? That's what. I mean, this one, right? Yeah. Is that just management? <coughs> and then it's just a traditional. I, I wonder what is that. The right place for ND to come in to talk about you about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so, um, so you think it would be the DP driver and then NetCom is the only way to talk to the legacy, and then that's hidden in the DP and then Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we actually use NetCom to talk to ours, but the NetCom is hidden inside of one thing I, I do, you know, we have these kind of discussion. Um, we have these discussions. Um, I don't want to force everybody to talk, but what Calix position based on? <laughs> I, I don't know what. 
I'm going to force you to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, do, I, do, I do like to know. I do like to know how you know.
you know, inside of a piece of hardware, right? So it, it seems like, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, the, get an agreement on really where the functional, where the architectural splits are. I mean, we've had a lot of discussion over the last couple of days. Where does our, where, architecturally, where do things split? And it sounds like we're picking up a little bit of a different, you know, point of view from, you know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people on, you know, how, where the abstraction actually resides, you know, for particular, you know, particular functions. So, and I don't know, is it changing? Maybe not in some people's, you know, minds, but, you know, it has, you know, as we come closer to putting more and more functionality that it takes to really deploy something, then, you know, we have to start, you know, worrying about these issues, I think. Dan? Um, you know, so I'm freaking from Clyro here, so I need Bolter for dummies, right? So my perspective is sort of where the all those guys are coming from is to start with the use case. All this lower level implementation is a good discussion, but if you don't start with the use case and show where these interfaces are going and how are you going to use it, you're going to circle forever. Um, that diagram you just showed was perfectly excellent. I mean, it was lots of detail, lots of interfaces, uh, but it doesn't show you, show you, the, you know, the path, right? So, why do I go down this path? Why do I go, this path? go down this path? Um, I'm not saying that shouldn't be all available today, but that's what I think what you need to try for. Now would help me. So. <laughs> Should I go to the one by one or three shots? You want to do that? I don't know. 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 I don't Right. And is it reasonable to expect that AT&T IT or DT IT or Turk Telecom or anybody is going to go build that themselves? You know, are, are there other cases that different that it's somehow preferable for the operator to build it instead of the community to build it? I think it's still a community thing. Yeah. I, I yeah, really do. <laughs> so, so if it's a community thing, then who, who is the other group that's going to do it? It's not this group. Uh, um. So another question to ask, I think you were, when you were talking about Volta being hardware abstractions to network elements, right. hardware being network elements, so there's a controller up on top. Now, is there a requirement for this controller to maybe handle legacy boxes and also these boxes together in, in a similar way? Yeah. In that case, the requirements change?
So, um, so I believe the answer is for legacy elements that there is some sort of uh, view, what we call peripheral view in the, in the court community, that would be common with a, a legacy element. And that the whole court pod can provide that view as one of its options. If you want the court pod to do more than act like an access node, if you want it to be a um, orchestratable NFT infrastructure, that's a different abstraction, so a more complex abstraction. But that, that's your other option. And I, I don't know if it's always one to one mappable or relatable because when you talk about the court pod, there's already some and control built in it, so you probably are doing a lot of things dynamically than what you used to do with, I guess, yes. the other nodes. So I don't know if we can make this whole thing look like one network. I mean, it's like a really higher level. Agreed. And I think uh, from an ATT perspective, I think we would um, we would see uh, the higher level or uh, automation system, the ONAP, handling both legacy and new equipment. Um, and it remains sort of an open question whether a court pod is better shown to own app as a peripheral mm -hmm. to make it look like something legacy and keep what we call the loose couple model, mm -hmm. or that it becomes an opportunity for orchestrating a larger set of, of workloads, and then that's a different that's a different abstraction. But to get started, I think. I, all right, and this is not a confused you to Tom's view, right? <laughs> Since we, were, we can all play that game. <laughs> um, I like to start simple and show success on something simplistic. And I think that lots of people in our industry know what a access node looks like. They know the northbound abstractions for configuration to an automation system. They may have already supplied AT&T with equipment that does that sort of thing. And to make the core pod look like that, I think, is a great first step. Um, I, <laughs> and what about Manuel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we're we're deeply in our Now we're gonna take the deck out, right? And you're being recorded. Oh, sure. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll, I'll give you a record. <laughs> about that cop interface this morning. We really like it's been a no-brainer the whole time from yeah. my perspective. Um, we can argue about the different levels of abstraction and where they go, and so I think we need to figure that out. And I think that that cop interface needs to be part of the goal of the court. Yeah, probably it's probably it'll be an adult that it's one and it's a pod, I mean, for a carrier. So I'm pretty sure they're going to want some kind of net cop control. It's really depending on who's going to provide it. Provided, uh, is, is a very bare minimal one that has very, very minimal number of models supported. Is that what the community supports and, and the integrators builds and customizes on top of that? So it, it, I, I think there's going to be for foreseeable future. That's, that's, that's what someone expects out of a network element or a piece of hardware that you're buying that's going to have that kind of net comp control for you know, I guess larger carriers. But that, it doesn't mean it has to be in the core, right? Yeah, it doesn't it part of the core, but if there was one that, that an integrator could take further, you know, try to keep it minimal, you know, just keep the scope down. Yeah, I think it's a valuable feature to demonstrate. So Tom, this is the, the original boat of the proposal, right? Yeah, I, I know that picture. Right. <laughs> 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 <Ooh. laughs> um, I think, very, at least for me personally, it's, it's the palm management block. That that palm management, um, this 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 block, um, the extension framework. It, it, well, it, it is an extension framework. Or, 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 I always <coughs> when I look at a palm management block, I I. I Translate that as a net comp related, or you know, because you're managing the pound there, 
related stuff, right? So, 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 what is the configuration, or, or what is that, uh, that uh, uh, F cap? I mean, that's where the F cap is, you know, or the component of inside both that just support F cap. Um, so, is that what? Well, of course, there's a PM. I think that's where the P is. <laughs> but, but uh, and right now, I'm looking at this one. So, what are we defining? This is the de the Volta daemon, right? So, and this is the Volta core, and then we have all the drivers. For the Volta 2.0, where is the boundary? We're defining. See, we were taking it apart. This, it, when this was drawn, the Volta HA daemon was one was yeah. one container, yeah. one process, one thingy. And so you might not have had as much concern about the interfaces between these and the separation, potentially even into projects of aspects that are inside the block. Um, now that we are disaggregating this, <laughs> um, and, and I'm happy that, I'm, I believe that it's a good thing to do, um, as you tar take these functionality and put them into different containers, you wind up being able to say, all right, I can take this thing and now it doesn't need to be nearly as tightly coupled to the core project. If you think of it as the full bus core, as it used to be. I think that's where we're coming from with this um, NetConf discussion. So I this one in perspective, what is the object of interest? Is it, is it an entity uh, analogous to the Volta demon, whether it's uh, monolithic or or, or comprises of multiple processes? Uh, or is it the core that's the principal object of interest for deployment? So, two things. The objective of deployment is greater in scope than even this picture. Okay. Right? But, but we're trying to figure out what's the, kind of the minimum box that we sort of the... Uh, well, it goes back to what was the point of starting the Volta project, and that was to be able to easily churn out um, open flow controlled access silicon. So it seems like they, you said, so it's the yellow box. Okay. <laughs> because it, it seems like that's the minimally viable one for deployment, right? Because it has all the pieces that you need to be able to interact with the system. Open flow has the next one, and, and then has the other bits. And really, the other bits are uh, irrelevant from the orchestrator or whatever is interacting with it. I think you could legitimately challenge whether the top protocol plugin framework is part of a minimally acceptable um, product. That um, it is very likely that any given deployment is not going to use all of these protocol plugins. Or well, which is why basically named OpenFlow and then uh, uh, NetConf. And NetConf. Right. Uh, and I, I generally react to those because those are ones I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. AT&T is interested in. I don't know that that would be true for everyone everywhere. But for the care, for the people I have spoken to, and it's not a small number, those are key, key aspects. So, the, the, so as a provider, the box you would want to consume would have a facade, open flow, and that's mm -hmm. That's what you're interested in. Then, and then you could have some references for how that box is constructed, but that's somewhat secondary, right? Yep. So, so, so I think we get to the kind of the where the box is drawn, and I get to your point, which is that includes the, it's basically analogous to the yellow box. Uh, much. Yeah. And CAP, you know, I didn't say it, but you know, I'm convinced that CAP is a very good interface too. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, what I was also mentioning is, you know, keeping the net comp to the minimum. I mean, someone might want to say, I want to get net comp to other conditions for a long time. I agree with that. And it, it oh. might, well, you know, be available on the cost of us. You know, of course, GRPC is available. Mm -hmm. but you know, start off very bare minimum, and if they really want NetConf notifications you know, for alarms, then that, at that time, maybe have, you know, you have a deeper NetConf server. And then Sergio was talking about the CLI as okay. a development and diagnostic tool. Yeah. One of the things I, I recall from the original report file is we really need to focus on being able to deal with tight context and mm -hmm. troubleshooting. Yeah. And then also 
was there a question on rest comp versus net comp? Because my assumption is rest comp is lower resource usage and you know, a bit easier, or, or do we care? I, I, I don't know that it's a big care about. Um, I think it's kind of. I think that the industry has tooled up a little bit more aggressively on net comp capability. Okay, but the interface is to an OSS DSS type of thing, right? Whether it's in comp or anything else. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think you're. Yeah, we're not going to deal with either of those. Either either either. Either. Yeah. So, in that topic, one thing implementation. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, just copy that to Okay. Uh, one thing we want to think about is today I don't think there is a net con, like the protocol itself in terms of like all these stuff that um, Tim just mentioned about the transactional database and um, the candidate running and all that. Once you start implementing that, I'm just saying you have to think about implementation as well. As well. Once you go from one database to another, you have to probably generate the resilience of GRPC messages. And then that gets saved into another database. And then that gets pulled and sent to be on line. So we have to think about how that is going to clarify. Do you mean the mapping between what is in the what is in the and daemon or in the server, and then how that gets gets mapped to the actual state? And so there is there is a inside the core which are right. sort of opposite. And the GRPC is the preferable way to communicate with the code, right, the common way. So now if you move from one giant database to another giant database, which typically Talking operators do, right, it will be like a bulk update and now GRPC provides like you have to do it one by one by one. So we have to think about how that, and then it has to happen twice because you need to do maybe to Kafka, not GRPC anymore to the drivers too. And then again you have to do GRPC or whatever the drivers devices use. So you have to think about those implementation details. Maybe trivial right now, they're not there yet. So. The data store though between um, two two containers is, is, is shared, right? Mm -hmm. I'm asking. Which so the data, data store, I'm, I'm not sure. Store. I'm the only shared data right now is SCD or console. It's a key value store. But you have to go through the core to access. That was my question. Okay, that was my question. It wasn't outside. David and I have had a discussion on this and we haven't closed, but yes, today you have to go through the core to make sure. So, so there's a few reasons why you want to go through the core. One is that there is a very thin abstraction layer so that the back end data store can be replaced. And you don't want every single User of this data store have to rewrite their back end. <clears throat> so if you go through the core, it doesn't matter what the data store is. We can swap it out at any time for something better, something new, and nobody's code changes. If we say everybody goes to etcd and helps themselves, then if we decide to swap etcd out or a console out, everybody needs to go change their code. Everything breaks. So you know that's that's my argument for not sending everybody to etcd. David said, uh, just use the technology that's there. Forget abstraction layers. <laughs> 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 I could you behind a library <laughs> if you want to abstract it, but as opposed to sending everything to one process. Okay, I think it. It. No, but is it small um, then the, the abstraction layer has to be closer to the core or closer to the so the abstraction layer could be put anywhere, right? You could, you could say it's a library, like David said, and then everybody just calls this library, which has three abstracts, so three three calls: get, put, and watch, right? That, that would be the three that, that we need for what we're using. Uh, but part part of the issue is that you know you may have a process that decides to lock something in the store, and because of some bug, never releases it. They're at least going through a consolidation. Uh, or, or one one access point. If you if there's that kind of bug or something weird has been written to the data store, you've got one place where you're logging who's asking for it and what's going on. Whereas you may not know, you suddenly the data store is corrupt and all these values are, are weird in there, and you have no clue which one of your hundred containers actually went and did that. If you're going through one location, that location is logging what's going on and making the request, and they can come, but you can actually track. So it's 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 
the debate that we've been having for years, right? My my real concern is that I, I don't want to serialize a, a capability that we can nature um concurrent. It's supposed to be concurrent. Yes. Or it can be concurrent. Well no, but you said by nature it's designed to be concurrent. All data pretty much that I know So that's my concern because serializing something is well, you're, you're not current. really serializing it, right? Because you have multiple cores.
robust uh, capabilities and quote standard Yang models. I think the problem was even when you map one way, when you map the other way, you cannot guarantee that you get the same model because mm -hmm. things could be mapped. Right. Like that. that's, that's, it's not that it's guaranteed that it will help you get it. I, I, I guess I, in my mind, I see the net comp server along, again, with the control, as parallel to the control plane. So they'd be kept in case as much as the control plane outside today with the whole record. Mm -hmm. They'd be in the same, it could be the Yang file and the code that supports that through almost would be in the same big repository. So from that perspective, they'd be the same project. That's kind of how I would see it going forward from a code perspective. So that we wouldn't have to need resources to re-implement a NetComp server because one already exists. In terms of the performance um, over an interface, that's, you know, the question would be, okay, if, if the current GRPC interface is not performant for like the bulk operation, for whatever operation, then you evaluate that GRPC interface and say, rather than necessarily move that server into the core, you say, okay, do we need to update the model that supports bulk updates or something like that? And so you, you look at how you might modify that system interface as opposed to then necessarily tightly couple it into the core. Does that make sense? Uh, that was one, uh, your, your statement was exactly what I was saying. Okay. Just, if you consider one way, the best way is to decide to put it in its own container. If it doesn't perform, fix it. It may the fix may be <laughs> have to put it in the core. <laughs> That's the worst case scenario. That would be the worst case scenario, and I would <laughs> fight that to the nail. But yeah. <laughs> well, you can't for fight fight performance, right? You can fix it, right, and try to work with it. But it still doesn't work. <laughs> Tom, your concern about the essentially the features that are lagging, like the VM and NMS, is precisely, is, is precisely in common with where we draw the box, uh, and where we draw the box. Like David said, uh, the box can include the applications, the control applications that are running on the controller that provide that functionality. So basically there would be no lag. As long as it doesn't work with other control plane applications either. Right. right. From the control plane applications <coughs> perspective, I could foresee different deployments to modifying the control plane applications, that they are not homogenous and used exactly the same sure. all, all yeah. across. And I may need this to be good to test, but so far my assumption internally has been that this net um, capability would be generic and homogenous across every bulk of the deployment. It might expose things that aren't used here or there, but the, the utility of creating a separate, different um, NetConf server for because you just didn't want to use some of the components doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, I would agree with that because again, I think it represents the data it represents represents all that data that needs to be set or needs to be looked at that doesn't fall under the primary abstraction. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that is a constrained set. And you may or may not use it, but the set's there yeah. all the time. So, okay. and you know, I think we need to go. I think there are a few action items actually in this discussion. We want to, you know, and you know, look at the standard. I can capture this. Look at the standard and see what model we want to. Include. I think that's something we definitely need to spend time on that. And I think there are other. <coughs> so um, the way I see it is, we probably do need to spend a period of time to um, to start. I think to study and invest, and then provide exact use cases for to address um, this issue. You know, are we? Uh, I, I, one thing is this. So VOTA is the highway extraction for open flow switches. Um, if, if, what is that? Do we want to maintain that as a, you know, the, the, the principle, right? The principle of VOTA. And, and then and regarding to the NetCom stuff, then, then we can spend a little bit more time to see how NetCom's role or how VOTA can interface to the NetCom portion of that. Um, I, 
sorry if I missed a lot of details here. Um, there was a lot of discussion regarding to the implementation of 385 because we wanted to support 385. Mm -hmm. We adapted VOTA, so expand config, right? Yeah. So, so, and and on the resource based of point of view. Is completion of the expand config um, the, that the, the work the community has been put in? Shall we march over and um, go forward with the completion of the feature set, um, the plan? That the plan was determined back into the May time frame last year, or oh, June time frame last year. Get a completion. I, I don't know whether it's the, 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 the 385 implementation is being determined on where we're going to adapt the data model of the 385 or not. I don't know whether that's a dependency. If there's a dependency, then um, is that something generic enough we can still live it there? Um, the open flow still can. Uh, in, Interact with it, and uh, well, what I'm saying is, you know, I, I that that depends on the resource, right? So whether that we the, the community wants to spend resource to complete the development of that portion within the Volta floor. So I think I think that's worth uh, exploring a little bit more. I don't know if you have time or not, but um, we, have, we have time. We have 20 so minutes. The yet. thing that concerns me. Um, is I can see I can see pros and cons, and on the pro, I'll start with the pro sides. But by um, aligning with um, 385, I think there'll be a larger capability or expectation of being able to interwork with OSS, DSS, and other orchestration type systems that are expecting to use either legacy or 385 based equipment. That's the pro. On the con side, what I worry about is that when we create changes, um, that there'll be work to do there to maintain this 3 5 abstraction. And it is yet another artificial abstraction. And that if we've got um, a data model which is essentially from the phi level, it's going to be exposed anyway. Some variation. I mean, the 385 components will be uh, covered, but they might not be covered exactly the way they were de developed there. And as we take both the forward through additional technologies, not just PON, but GDOT fast, fixed wireless, maybe we use this for the, the user plane in a CUPS um, implementation in the future, then it's just not going to be 385. There's going to be this ginormous um, you know, get to to meet various types of legacy information models for legacy network elements, and right now it, it looks small because it's, it's just the one. As we go forward, we've got increases, and at some point it becomes a problem. Um, I don't know what to do about that. Right? That that's my worry is that this you know get to take um, this disaggregated system and then as best as we can create, besides the abstractions we're interested in using, create another abstraction that's been standardized somehow or another. Um, that, that is, I don't know, you know, I'm not trying to say it, you must do this or do that, but it's sort of the, the little worry zone in the back of my head is, is active and that's fine. For another year more important. <laughs> 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 no, my, my thought was um, well, that's in the end, again, the question, right? Um, the drivers, um, actually, and then the adopters, they have both sides. They're going to they're gonna handle, if you start bottom up, uh, they're going to handle some forwarding and some collaboration provisioning related parameters or um, information elements, right? So 
know, um, I think we, we almost can get can get around um, building an abstraction for both the sort of dynamic control plane and the more persistent one. But I think what I don't see Walter um, evolving to is becoming a persistent storage uh, itself, so it's not going to have all storage space. Mm -hmm. But uh, I believe um, it will need to handle both types of, um, let's say, data. Totally. Uh, and so that the control management uh, uh, you know, uh, it's somewhere in between sometimes, right? Uh, but uh, it's actually both planes are somehow to be covered. And um, as long as we can model the instructions accordingly, that are not reliant on any specific model, as you suggest, right? That we don't produce the interfaces to just handle that single model, and everything else needs an architectural change, then that would probably be fine. So um, that, that would be where I would say reliance on WD 385, no. But um, having it funded to a completely different system I would create another need to talk to the device somehow circumventing uh, the mm -hmm. control path, which creates um, an interesting aspect. Um, and didn't we discuss this uh, somehow at length uh, at the time of, what was it, working text 358 or something? Uh, and, and oh, the wrong guy. I was still doing oh, okay, 69 stuff. stuff like that's not you.
maybe pieces of that 355, or maybe the whole thing, I don't know, whatever you want to expose, but just what you want to expose, right? You'll take a 385 model, and then I think Sharisha showed some of that, you'll take pieces of that, and you'll want to expose pieces of that. There'll be things that those, because person A and person B, organization A, organization B, develop the model, there'll be some overlap, commonality of, of things, right? You may want to look at that and say, hmm, Maybe I want to generate uh, or create a common uh, fragment from that to do that function because they're similar, right? So you wouldn't expose those two yeah. pieces of it. That's that's what I'm saying. Is that I think I think if you work, I agree with what you just said. And the thing that that I'm sort of rolling around in my head is weighing two different kinds of approaches. If <coughs> Now going forward, my orchestration systems can ingest models from devices and onboard them in an automated way, then having developers fine-tune the north-down models to meet a certain spec becomes an overhead. It becomes something that is now an appendix. On the other hand, if that type of activity, the sort of automatic ingestion of the model from below is a problem for orchestration and service systems and that it becomes enabling for them only to see the same models come up from different, from disparate equipment, then it is worth our while to spend the time at the programmatic level to make sure that we map into a well understood model. And I really don't, I don't know the answer yeah, to that question. So if I did, then I'd have a strong opinion. <laughs> didn't you just state that when your first statement that you made was um, OSS systems, right? The, the, the good thing about a standard fragment <laughs> piece of it was that those would have been uh, known by those systems. They would have been, they would have been uh, already, I'm going to say known, right, by those, and understood by those systems. So, um, so they would have already used, used those models. Take 355, for example, right? You know, uh, uh, an OSS system may very well use 355 for various purposes, right? That, so when I ingest that in, your, in, your, in, in this world, that developer would understand the use of that 355 than if you would have created it yourself. I, I think that's what you started your, your, your argument of saying, well, on the pro side, uh, when you, we talked about um, the, uh, I'm sorry, the first comment you made earlier, I, I'm getting older. <laughs> so the, the thing that um, the thing that might help with, mm -hmm. with this um, with this discussion is in ONAP, there is no developer who is writing code to the to the models. There is a um, there is a compilation or a, a programmatic assembly from the service model, which the developers do put together into mappings in, into network element configuration. And what I'm not aware of, and what I'd like to I probably have an obligation to go learn about, is whether or not the new network element comes along and it offer up its model. Here is my model and the orchestration of the ONAP system ingests the model and then recognizes the, the appropriate linkages and gets that done, or if that's something yeah. some human programmer has to then manipulate. It's, yeah, so I, I would think you'd only recognize that if it's talking to a well-known defined model. Otherwise, you're using some sort of heuristics, I guess, to do some mapping. Precisely, but even with the well-defined model, right? Yeah. The, 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 what constitutes a well-defined or well-adopted well, uh, model is because there is wide base of understanding the semantics. Correct. Mm -hmm. The model itself does not carry, the Yang does not carry the semantics. The comments in the, comment in the Yang carry semantics. Mm -hmm. But, but those, are, those that are okay. actually transcribed by somebody is something so so perhaps in on that you have some other so something that you can attach to the model or that works side by side with the model that can mechanically provide essentially these automatic bindings which do have implied not uh, knowing the semantics. Mm -hmm. 
but at the end itself does not. And so, okay. so the thing is, I think we need to be careful here. Um, and perhaps this is what you mean by being careful. The, the automatic clearly this the whole idea behind Yang is the Yang two chain is that it takes the canonical Yang fiction and generates a series of artifacts which would otherwise be boilerplate and mind numbing work, mm -hmm. right? But then the studs effectively, right? So the, the encoding, decoding logic, the studs, and then somebody has to attach to the logic of doing the work to the studs. So did I hear you just say that on that does that has, has something that can automatically attach some reverse work items to those stuff. So um, my understanding is that ONET has two layers of models, a service model, mm -hmm. which is not device specific, and that you know, what it automates mm -hmm. is taking the characteristics of that service model and finding the matching capabilities from the topology and network element suite of information that has been in, imported through its set of models. And then it finds the appropriate things to configure and create. Okay, so maybe maybe you do have a tool then that takes basically service uh, service level that allows somebody who's not a developer to take these service level models and essentially draw a line for some action and basically to wire up effectively That's right. the, the implementation of the service model onto specific uh, right. device. There's even something called a service creation suite where right. there is exactly such a tool that allows non programmers to develop services, so to speak. But I, from what you said, I think I think we do wind up um, what I heard was that there is not some semantic um, representation that's part of Yang today. And so therefore, you know, this might be something to think about, but not for twenty eight. Right? That that is something that would facilitate automation and onboarding of new kinds of elements if there were um, not just the Yang model but the semantics for those entries as of something that could be exchanged in a capability exchange, right? I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss it because it's important in terms of maintaining efficiency of the implementation. Mm -hmm. But I would argue that that is part of the implementation and part of how. And I think we probably, I would suggest, that we first focus on describing the sort of the outer box first, kind of the black box, which means that we open flow, that we netcom, and these are the models that we expect to support at least in the initial set of implementation with possible uh, down the road additional uh, you know, other models. And then secondary to that is you know the concerns pertaining to sort of the liability of maintaining this implementation right. down the road. Right. Which means, okay, probably ought to be investigating something that can be maintained by non-developers. But I think that would be secondary. Mm -hmm. So, but that, but Tom, I think what you're, what you I think you're absolutely right. By the way, in, in the terms that, if I expose, and let's just use 355. Let's get off the deep on thing. Use 355 for a second, right? If I expose 355 to the various controllers in ONAP, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, if I correct me wrong, what you're saying is you should you you would like to know if if ONAP is ONAP <laughs> is set up would be set up how how a 355 model would be set up within the ONAP ecosystem, mm -hmm. right? And and if it's if it's able to be done because it was done before because you know maybe they ONAP did another DPU and you had those mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Or if it could be inferred by the model, that'd be something beneficial. Otherwise, it would be like, why do we need to do it? Because it's not something that's from 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 from, from someone who uses ONAP, right? From from that provider's uh, viewpoint, right? Is that correct? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it all all hinges upon what can be automated and what's going to require human intervention in terms of creating linkages and onboarding new devices. And if um, if there were a simple way, or even not simple, if there were a way to automate onboarding of disparate models but without having to have human intervention, I'd say that the value of having this standard meet me point in a, in a model with a WT in front of it is 
there's not much, right? The, the value goes away over time because these are self-assembling systems. That seems to not be the case. It seems to be the case that with an ONAP that the developer, you might be able to import the model, but then you're going to have to create the linkages for this automatic um, mapping between the service models and the device configuration to occur. And you don't want to have to go through that human intervention for disparate models, even though they were pretty similar, um, which means that we'll have to take that on in the Volta uh, activity for a number of different model and sub-model components. Um, and we've got, like, well, on the, on the good news is this, that from an open flow abstraction, the good news is it remains fairly static. I'm not going to pretend it's going to be perfect for forever, but it's a single model that regardless of how many different implementations underneath and technologies come along, that'll, that will have small deltas. On the other hand, the config, the, the management stack, is likely to have another WT whatever come along that lines up with every different phi that we stick in at the bottom layer of Volta. And that's going to wind up becoming sort of a, a, a job that gets bigger and bigger as Volta gets applied to more and more uh, physical layer technologies. So I, I feel like it's, you know, walking through the scenarios, the use cases of how do we anticipate carriers on for you know, new technologies or their devices to the point where Oakenflow takes over. And right. what does that mean in terms of implying configuration mm -hmm. and what that means in terms of expose, what model we need to expose. Mm -hmm. That's going to give us a set of what we need to expose and yeah. that's going to determine greatly what we can or cannot even expose us in terms of the value to team on degrees. And, but the thing that also, in addition, in addition to that, <laughs> the thing I was con were concerned about is that I think that the sort of fundamental modeling space within Volta is around the protobus. That's, that's sort of the basic data information model location. And if you're automatically generating in that comp, that's a low, um, a low work item. If on the other hand, you have to manually make it match to an existing standardized model, that's a lot more work. That's why I kept looking for, is there a way to automatically ingest net Yang models so that we wind up not having to do this careful mapping as an ongoing concern within Volta. And then mm -hmm. out of the conversation, I guess that that's not the case that we do have to worry about that. Yeah, it's good. Maybe, maybe this is just in, in my mind, but it's not so completely clear to me what we get from OpenFlow. So, you know, the map capture of visuals. I mean, in theory, we could get more information, right? We could get the previous mapping, we could get cues, we could get bandwidth from the guy over the pencil. I mean, we really need to define what does OpenFlow give us that overlaps with something in the net console. I think OpenFlow provides a, a common semantic that it's almost like you, you don't have a bottoms up model with OpenFlow. You start off with the OpenFlow match action uh, semantic and its long set of verbs and adjectives, and then that gets mapped down as well as it can into the supporting infrastructure. Well, that's, a, that's the benefit, really. Sure. Well, but, uh, you know, do we get a, in, from, from uh, you know, the, the uh, ONCI perspective, do we get a big map from the open flow rule? Do we get? Can we wait for it? So, we definitely, I'm going to be my kind of, yeah, this is not the copy of my company, not mine. Right. <laughs> so, what open flow gives you is it gives you the ability to send configuration messages in real time based on events that happen in mm -hmm. the control plane, right? right. In other words, I could do this whole configuration with NetComp, no problem, just like I could do it with TL1, no problem, or no problem, right? So the point is that AT&T, as an example, right, not, not, not that that's driving it, but has a certain implementation they want to do for 802.1x, and they would rather not do that on each individual OLT box, right? right? 
I mean, let's just be frank about what one of the things that drives yeah. this yeah. for sure that your implementation is, and maybe everybody's right, it's slightly different than others, this mm -hmm. magic NAS port ID, whatever these things are. Mm -hmm. And you don't even have to get an NDA from the people that you're deploying these boxes because you're just you're going to handle it up in your secret, you know, sauce that you've got in Onos, right? So that's what that's what really it gives you over and above simply you could there's no reason why you can't associate VLANs, queuing, all that stuff with NetConf and do it just once in service activation and you're done. But what they've got now with OpenFlow is the ability that, hey, when I break the connection between the home router and the ONT, I'm going to send an event up and do some OpenFlow stuff and when I get EAP packets, I'm going to send the event up and pipe, start piping them and go right. Right, up, right And so the same way you can offboard also IGNP. Right. Same way. Right. Well, what's the right. boundary of which yeah, no, OpenFlow gives me a list that right. I need to, you know, yeah, that comes again for this. Right. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll that okay. And we can also and we can also move forward to I know no one wants to talk about this, but you can move forward to media cell too, where I'm gonna need some physical layer parameters at service activation, whatever they are. Yeah. And so you try to do zero, which you know, probably is gonna work for the most part with G one you know, or, or X or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I could do maybe zero in G fast or maybe a template. Mm -hmm. But certainly when I get the VDSL2 or anything like that where I've got to, you know, do some tweaking, I will have to have some service activation physical layer stuff that will be appropriate for OpenFlow. Agreed. Yeah, that's the, the boot up aspect of the yeah. Yeah. the thing we talked about earlier as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can do all the serial number stuff too, right? The, you, you know, you've got a, you know, one view says, oh, I can kind of modify open for the serial number stuff there, but it's pretty well, I think, taken care of in NetConf with the NetConf interface. You just have to make sure you're talking about the same thing on the two different interfaces. Right. Yeah. And how far can you go with compromise with QoS with just an open flow set of information? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. How far can you go with compromise with QoS just with the open flow attributes? Right. So I think that um, if you need to dynamically change your traffic management end to end, manage your schedulers and queues and whatnot, then it becomes problematic in OpenFlow as it exists today, right? And um, yeah. So, so nobody's suggesting though that the I mean, a thing was agreed on, right? Already decided that OpenFlow can come. Yeah. Is that not been decided? I'm a little bit confused. So, so to me, your concern about the, the automatic code generation phase. Yeah. So you're interested in generating automatically Yang models based on the like, GRPC R so that we don't have to keep them in date or the other way around. So what, when this all started. That was the story, right? So the, the first time Ollie pitched this to me, it was that we're going to create these protobufs and that all of these protocols at the top are going to come nearly for free, right? They'll be automatically, you can see them that, there, right? <laughs> They're going to be automatically generated. Nobody's going to have to lift a finger. And so we'll focus on this one model in one place and then these things will just automatically sort of follow along, right? They'll be the, the tail behind the dog. And now there's a there's something not so shiny in that argument in that look on the netcon space there is a set of SDOs churning out standard models that they're that the industry is going to expect equipment to adhere to and there's no there's no even expectation that your protobuf um, data model will map into a standard um, Yang model. For net time. So okay. now you got to now you're going to map it. That, that, that doesn't drive. That's an oxymoron. Really? Well, so standard Yang model. Okay, I agree. In the information model, um, standard information model is usually expressed through some language. Yes. Usually through Yang in the yep. context, right? So that's that, that's what sets the standard. The Yang model sets the standard. So that's mm -hmm. the canonical thing, and you go from there. Mm -hmm. Now. It's possible, like, and the Google does this, right? They have a tool set that takes the Yang model and compiles it into basically G, essentially GRPC, GNMI, right? Mm -hmm. 
products, it basically ends up being products over GRP. Mm -hmm. um, so in that direction, I get it. But yeah. right, but that's not that's not the argument that Ali was making. Right. Because you there the canonical representation was the GRPC. Correct. And then from there you could go potentially, and, and he's not wrong, you could go to to upwards to other inter you could I can certainly imagine that you would basically have a fairly reasonably generic UCLI adapter that would basically think, okay, I'm gonna so based on the intersection of the GRPC messages, I'm going to generate a real CLI. It might be a little bit ugly, but it will be down to one for one, down to basically one for one mapping with the GRPC, and I can imagine doing the same thing with the M model. Yes. Now the M model that it's going to generate is not going to be any sort of a standard. It's going to be basically just an immediate projection of the mm -hmm. underlying implementation. Yes. That yes. That's why we were just going to give you every single freaking knob that you want. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And it's certainly possible to do that, but for that, I don't believe that there is a. At least I have not heard of one, a tool to do this. You certainly write one. Are you going to tool go from here? Yes, no, no, you can go from. Uh, I mean, there's a tool. But Is there? Okay, so it's my You can go, but it won't look. You cannot guarantee that it will look exactly yeah. like the Yang. Well, no, no, no. So, so the, the, that's the thing, thing is, problem. you're not starting with the Yang. You're starting with GRPC. Yes, well, you, no, no. But you yes, think the GRPC from a standard Yang model, generated the information model, the data model. You go back, you're not guaranteed to see the same thing. Okay, so, so what is the gold standard here? What is it? So I thought the GRPC is already crafted. Yes. Or today, so yes. Today, today mm -hmm. the GRPC crafted, so we're starting with the But not for, yeah. not for the but element that we care, that we're talking about on this particular plane but that would go through the next To the, the X-Pond GRPC, no, no, no. it was started from the Yang model, generated oh, that one. GRPC, yeah. but now if we do the reverse from oh, GRPC, okay. Okay. So okay. you won't get back to that. No, I would not expect that you would do that, right? It's, it's some other way. Transformation. Good. Right, but then, like you said, those are the only. Nobody is making standard Google for about models, right? So you no, yeah. So you have to instead of reinventing, I mean, hand crafting those, right? You're coming. You're trying to generate them from somewhere, so you don't have to do it every single time. That's I would. I would argue we're asking for too much here, a little bit, frankly. I would. I would say let's figure out the standard. Figure out the end models that you want to support for external interactions for a. Initial brain up and B for diagnostic. Mm -hmm. Figure out what those are, then worry about the implementation segment. And I think that's fine. I just don't think we know what or if the standard model needs or needs for that Buddha. Right? We, have to, we, have to we, just, that. we just don't know. Yet. And, and whether no. that, to, you know, no, if no, I have for all the parts that we know for. But um, yeah, I would argue that if we don't identify that, then that's a bit of a show self. Right. Agreed. Yeah, I think we've been arguing around the hey, let's go actually do work for a couple hours. I think we should break for lunch. Um, <laughs> that is a small question. <laughs> No, but I think I think it may lay out some of the work we need to do in consideration for the 2.0. Uh, I think um, uh, so. Or that that can be the work that I done, uh, in addition to adding additional features. But I think those those are fundamental work we need to do, and hopefully you can do it in parallel in some way. Um, I, I'm, 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 what I'm saying at the same time, the world I need to be able to support. Uh, the field trials or park activity of the service provider. I don't want to, there's now people say, okay, both are yeah. regrouping in some way. No, no, I, I think that we need to march forward, right? So, 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 um, so let's, let's take lunch. I'm, I'm taking off the, the bridge and I'll come back at 1.15. Um, okay, so, so I'm not going to be recorded. <laughs> We're sorry, your conference is ending now. Please hang up.